Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, oh gracious Father, Lord God, I thank you for being the great I am, the awesome one. Lord God, I thank you, oh God, for meeting us at the point of our needs. Father, we are praying mightily for this nation. Lord God, we are praying for all of our elected officials, our public servants. And oh God, last but not least, we are definitely praying for the entire household of faith. Lord God, we ask you now to bless this Bible class. Oh God, bless the hearers. This we pray. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. I thank God for all our church members, always. Those who have partnered with us, amen. All our well wishes, amen. All our supporters throughout the United States as well as throughout the entire world. Our topic today is the devil's promises. Know your enemy. The devil's promises. Know your enemy. As always, I love to remind you that Jesus is coming. You may say, well, Pastor D, why do you always say that? Well, there may be some who are listening for the first time. And for others, I want to constantly remind you that Jesus is coming. He cannot lie. He said that he would be back. I don't want us to get weary in well-doing and give up. So I want you to be prepared and ready for the soon coming king. Remember now our topic for this Bible class, the devil's promises, know your enemy. <clears throat> I want to read in our scripture lesson that I want to tell you a little short story about what I understand to be pretty much a true story. Our scripture lesson is coming from Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, also James chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. And we will be reading from the King James Version. Reads on this wise. <clears throat> now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Go with me now to James chapter 1, 
verse 12 through 15. James chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. Reads on this wise, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. <clears throat> While we are talking, we want you to keep in mind as a central or a focused thought, <clears throat> and that is satanic deceptions are as old as time. Satanic deceptions are as old as time. Keep that in mind. And I want you to let this particular scripture ring out in your mind as we uh, share with you the word of God. It's coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. And it says, fear that somehow, I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cunning or shrewd ways of the serpent. Now this is Paul talking to the saints of God. I'll mention this later. Centuries later. But we see that old devil, that serpent, that deceiver is still up to his same old evil deceptive ways. I want to share this quick story with you. <clears throat> I was told that there was this particular woman, uh, this particular young, young lady, rather. She found herself in a compromising position, and she didn't know how to handle herself. So when asked about it, she said that, all I ever was taught was about God and the church. And so she, when she was in that compromising position, she had no clue how to handle herself. And I want to say to all parents, life happens. And so I'm going to say to the fathers in particular, Please make sure you have the talk and talk some more with your sons. And mothers, I'm saying the same thing to you. Please have the talk and talk some more to your daughters. They need to know something about the enemy. Um, it's good. Very good to teach them about God and the church, but there are some things about life you need to school them about. And it may help them, uh, help keep them from getting in certain positions. And if they do happen to find themselves in certain compromising positions, they will have some idea how to deal with it. Nowadays, there's a lot of deception going on. And I believe you will agree with me. Now, what is the antidote to deception? Well, 
I'm sure any parent is aware of the ongoing situations, of the, of the, the problems that may come up if we find ourselves somehow or another um, not being able to help our child in that our child somehow or another get a hold to some bad, bad uh, poison in our home. Uh, I'm sure that somewhere, somehow or another, that the parent uh, would need a way of trying to make sure that he or she is able to uh, find a way to combat or have some sort of drug interdiction or some kind of antidote that will help the child uh, recover from taking that medicine. So I'm saying to all of us today, let's just say that the child get a hold to some sort of, uh, let's say, uh, cleaner at the house. And somehow or another, you, you, you need to take some quick action. Isn't that right? You need to take some very quick action. So what you do, you find an antidote that will help your child. Uh, and you administer that as soon as you possibly can to counteract the poison. Well, an antidote is a medicine taken or given to counteract a particular poison. Now, there is another antidote that all believers need to keep handy in this world of deception, in this world of false narratives, in this world of alternate realities and fake news. Um, we need an antidote to deception. Uh, through a variety of ways, Satan continually attempts to deceive, amen, uh, the people of God. He endeavors to convince people that certain actions and behaviors are not so bad. Did you get that? He endeavors, amen, to, to tell you, oh, that's not so bad. Um, he tries to, 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 to tell them, try it, you will like it. Now, how many times have you heard that? Satan's continuous deceptive tricks confront us in a variety of ways. Now, he, he, he confronts us in almost every aspect of our lives. The antidote to deception is simple. It's inexpensive and readily available. It is to trust in God. Yes, trust in God. Now, those who lovingly embrace, trust, and hold to the scriptures we have the foundation, amen, to combat the devil. We find Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, and I, I, I may read that later on, but if I don't, amen, I want you to know, amen, that I want you to read it on your own. That 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, he spoke of those who would be deceived. He spoke of those who would be deceived because they lacked the divine power to demolish, amen, strongholds. Listen, let me say this again. They would be deceived because they refuse to accept and love and enjoy, amen, the truth of God's word. Did you hear what I just said? 
I said that Paul talked about uh, Satan himself, amen, how he deceived people. And those that refuse to love, amen, to love God, those that refuse to, to embrace God, they will be definitely deceived. So we find in 2 Thessalonians, amen, that Paul talked about, amen, they refuse to love the truth. Thank you, Jesus. On the other hand, those who love the truth will hold to it and will not suffer delusion. I encourage you, amen, to keep it simple. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, love the Bible. That's not too hard to do. Read and love the word of God and hold to the principles of God's word. Thank you, Jesus. Whenever Satan comes around to entice you into questionable activities, thank you, Jesus, calling good evil and evil good, you will not be deceived. Now, despite all of the changes that are constantly taking place all around us, Satan has not deviated from his same old tactics. Thank you, Jesus, that he used in the Garden of Eden, casting doubt. He's good at that. <clears throat> Casting doubt on God's word and making God's plan, amen, uh, seem like it's too hard. Oh, yes. He then, he, he worked. It worked then. And guess what? After thousands of years, he is still using the same plan. And the reason being, it's still working. Mm -hmm. He is still using the same playbook. He is still using it today because, yes, it is still working. Men and women are still being deceived. I think many times they know better. But it sounds so good. Satan is rotten to the core. And anyone who embraces him takes on his characteristics. We find Jesus talking to some Pharisees, a group of religious people. He said in John 8, 44, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to, amen, carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, <clears throat> for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. That's what he's used to. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. And Paul said, many people will suffer because they refuse to embrace the truth. Many people will be deceived because they refuse to embrace the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen at this. If you do not embrace the truth, the truth of God's word, you are a prime candidate for Amen. Deception. Now in our lesson, we find Paul centuries later, centuries later, warning the saints 
amen, of being tricked by Satan. Just as Eve was in the Garden of Eden. Centuries later, that same method is being used. <clears throat> now let us take a look at some of the lies Satan told. Hoping, amen, you will be on the lookout for his deceptive devices. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Lie one. Satan struck first at the relationship God had established with Adam and Eve. Disobedience to God's word cuts the cord of fellowship between you and God. We find in Isaiah 59 and 2, it says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. <clears throat> Satan wants the fellowship and communication between you and God to be broken and sin. Disobedience will do just that. <clears throat> now, then that makes you fair game for his deception and false narratives. Once that fellowship is broken, that makes you fair game for Satan's deception and false narratives. Because of disobedience, which is a spiritual death, which is separation from God, it precedes or comes before, amen, physical death of the body. So God was right. The instant Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they instantly died spiritually. And Satan deceived them and lied to them, told them you will not die, and God knows it. No, their physical body didn't die then, but he eventually did. Satan's lie contradicted God's word and planted seeds of doubt in Eve's mind. And right now, the same thing is going on right here in our society. It's maybe going on right there on your job and maybe amen, in your home. Seeds of doubt are being planted. So you got to be mindful and very careful that the enemy will not plant a seed of doubt in your mind. Sometimes that's all it takes to get you off, amen, on a tangent or a wild goose chase, chasing dreams that is not godly and will lead you nowhere good in a hurry. Eve already had everything. She had life. She could live and live and live. She already had it. But the bad thing about it is she followed Satan's lies on a tour to constant disappointment and eventual death. Many people have rejected the simple instruction of God's word in favor of a philosophy that appeals to their carnal nature. We find in Proverbs 14 and 12, it teaches us that there is a way that seems right to a man, but it is, but its end is the way of death. Lie two. Satan's first lie promised life. And actually, she already had life. His second lie promised hope. Your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good 
and evil. Satan insinuated or implied that by obeying God's word, he would not real, realize her true potential and she would be consigned or demoted to a second class status and that she would never achieve the life which she was capable of. While Satan promised life and hope, he was unable to deliver. Adam and Eve's eyes were indeed opened, all right. However, they did not find the thrilling hope Satan promised. Instead, they saw and lived the harsh realities produced by a life based on deception. And I got a feeling some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you know that harsh life because you were led down a primrose path. You were led down a road of deception. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. How many of you were promised the rainbow, but all you got was a whirlwind, a bunch of hot air? You know, I'm reminded of a story that was in our daily bread. There was this man came in the business, <clears throat> pulled out a $20 bill. Some of you read this. And he put it on the counter and told the person, I want you to give me change for $20. And and opened the register to give him a chain of twenty dollars. The man pulled the gun and said, "I want you to give me all the money in that register. Give it to me." He 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 pulled off a robbery. He grabbed the money that was given to him and took out, and he left the twenty dollars on the counter. Come to find out, the money he took was only fifteen dollars. And he left $20 on the counter. And that's what happens sometime in life. You think you're going for the gusto, and all you get is a fist full of air. Stay with Christ Jesus. Stay with God. Stop being deceived. Adam and Eve was living in paradise. And through deception, they lost it all. Through them, paradise was lost. <clears throat> but thank God, through Christ Jesus, paradise was regained. So thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who had Christ, those of you who had God's word, those of you who were in the church and walked away. This is your opportunity to come back home. Come back to church. Come back, amen, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Falling prey to Satan lies so often introduce people to a world they never knew existed. Let me say that again, because some of you really know what I'm talking about. I said, falling prey to Satan's lies so often introduce people to a world they never knew existed. Once strong, they became prisoners of addiction that they cannot shake. Once healthy, their bodies become ruined with disease. Once intelligent, their minds become muddled with confusion, unfinished thoughts. Once full of life, dreams, 
and ambitions, they become hopeless and resign to a pitiful existence. Following after Satan's promises. Lie three. Satan lies are progressively evil. First, Satan told Eve that she could live forever. <clears throat> contradicting what God told him. Second, he told her that eating the fruit would elevate her status. Mm -hmm. He then promised her that if she would ignore God's word, she will become God's equal. Now, doesn't that sound quite familiar? That, that's the same kind of thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. Satan offered no proof of his promises. But yet, she still believed him. Lie four. <clears throat> Satan promised Eve the ability to determine, to, to establish standards for proper behavior. The ability to determine and to establish standards for proper behavior. Mm, 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 mm. Now, if that could have happened, it would have made her God's equal, where her opinions were as valid as God's word. Now, how, how many people today think that, that, that they know and their opinion is just as valid as God's word? Well, I don't know what the Bible says, but I, I just believe. I don't care what the Bible says. I, I just believe. Let me tell you something. God's word is the final authority. Thinking that her opinion were as valid as God's word. Let me tell you something. Satan's successes depend on people allowing his suggestions to hatch in a man their minds. James 1, 14 through 15 teaches us this, that temptation comes from our own desires. It drags us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Now, the devil's tools are temptation. And you're familiar with a lot of these. His tools are temptation, deception, doubt, lust, self-exaltation, and the list goes on. A steady dose of God's word and the Holy Spirit is a great antidote to all these tools of Satan. It is impossible for Satan to do good. Yes, let me say that again. It is impossible for Satan to do good. And if he does something that looks good, you can bank on that it is something to deceive you. He is rotten to the core. And I say to you, reject his deception. Embrace God's word. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, whatever power Satan had, was allowed him by God. But the day will come when Satan will answer for his sins. We find in Revelation 20 and 10 
The Bible teaches us that the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now that's a price to pay for disobedience to God. It's comforting to know that the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the other hand, amen, they are, they are weapons, they are divine. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension of self-importance that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I ask all of you to take an introspective look at ourselves. Make a deliberate decision to make a man, Jesus Christ, our choice. Take out some time and, 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 and make a deliberate decision to make Jesus Christ your choice. I want to say to you, when you hear God's word, whatever state of mind you are in, just know that God loves you and showed how much he loved you when he hung there on Calvary's rugged cross. Oh, yes, it did. Whatever you do, I ask you to please humble yourself. Accept the direction that God is leading you. Remember, your road to salvation and your re recovery to wholesome, wholeness can start with repentance and remission of your sins. Having a, a turn from the evil of your doing, have a change of heart and a change of mind and make Jesus Christ your choice. Thank you, Jesus. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, and live a righteous life. In other words, we all, we all must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And that's according to Jesus Christ. And he said, I am the door. And if anybody know how to get into the kingdom, he does. And I say to you today, will you surrender your will to Jesus Christ today? And stop procrastinating. Stop putting it off. Please be mindful that Jesus is calling for all to be born again of water and of the spirit. And I pray that we have said something, amen, that will bless you, amen, on this time, on this Bible class. Now, for your continued growth in God's word, we have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m., amen, on Sundays, in-person worship on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m., and online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Please do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share, amen, with your friends on Facebook and other places. And I say now, while it's still on your mind, hit that button. Share it. Share it with somebody you love. Share it with somebody that you care about. For more information on the plan of salvation, please feel free to call 678-759-8989. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we love you much. We praise you. We give you the glory. We magnify you now. Oh, Lord God, we pray. Touch somebody's heart. Oh, God, help them to turn from the evil of their doing. Oh, God, and turn to you, oh, God. Help them to love your word. Oh, God, love the truth that they may not be deceived. This we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you.